Okay, so as the opening of this video, March 18th, the stock market dropped 1,300 points, officially under 20,000 points at the Dow Jones. All the gains that happened under the Trump economy, absolutely obliterated and gone. So let me ask you a question. What's on your mind? What's going on? I wanna know, drop it in the comment section below. I wanna engage, I wanna let you know that there's a business out there that cares and leading at the same time. Why? We're playing offense. In moments like this, this is when our business was birthed during hard times. So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how to stay ahead of the coronavirus recession in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad happening right now in three, two, one. And let's get going. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Moment headquarters here in Oakbrook Terrace, Illinois. Come check around, let's, let's, let's take a look. Let's take a look, what's going on right now? What's going on right now? Listen, we have 15,000 clients last year in our national agency from coast to coast. Our, our phone is quiet, one more time. Yeah, our phone is quiet, you know why? Because we help our clients adopt a financial defensive strategy as it relates to their finances, as it relates to retirement, as it relates to their hard-earned savings, they've adopted for years. So let's take a look at my wife's office. She's the one who handles clients all the time. Let's go down to her office and see how her clients are doing. Come, come follow me. Woohoo! Oh. Watch out. Show, social distancing, social yeah. distancing. <laughs> so, my wife sees all the clients. I did for 12 years, from 1998 to 2010, I was seeing nothing about all clients. My wife sees all the clients now. Let's see what she's got to say about her clients losing money during this downturn in the market. Come check it out. Hey, sweetheart. Hi. This, this is my wife, Sheila Sapala. Hello. Obviously, she looks 10 times better than, uh, than most agents you'll see out there in the marketplace. So, so, babe, what's the state? We lost 1,300 points in the market today. Uh, worst couple uh, times in the stock market, in the history of the stock market, our clients, your clients that you've been serving, how many of them have lost money? Zero. Really? Mm -hmm. So none of them are worried about the stock market? I am making sure that their pensions don't get stolen. Making okay. sure their 401ks don't get stolen, making sure their retirement, their livelihood, and having a purpose after retirement doesn't get stolen. Zero. Are you playing financial defense right now? So, sweetheart, I mean, you know, we've completely shifted our business due to the quarantine and the encouragement for people to stay home. We've, you know, we've went into a, a different adaptation of how to run our business. We're doing webinars now. Yep. So you're doing a webinar. Uh, how frequently are you doing webinars now? Uh, constantly throughout the day. It's the busiest we've ever been. And thank goodness for technology and people can see me now. Wait a minute. There's the recession. This is the busiest we've ever been. Sweetheart, why, why are we the busiest we've ever been? I mean, what, what's going on? I would say uh, fear sharpens listening and people now get it that uh, they can't afford to lose and they need to be protected in certain situations that affect them, which is their unexpected death, which is uh, health and of course, losing their retirement. So babe, so all the people that said a week ago, two weeks ago, it's okay, the market's gonna recover, it'll bounce back, what now? I always knew planting those seeds, a time like this would come and I'm just thankful that we're here, that's all. Good, there you go, that's my wife. You wanna help your finances stop the bleeding, contact my wife, Sheena Sapala, we'll put her, we'll, we'll put her Instagram handle right here. I'm getting good at it. <laughs> and she's been really good, she's really on social media right now. I'm <laughs> All right, thanks babe. Okay, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. So here's several things I want to share with you based on a taping of this video, which was uh, March 18th. So here, here's uh, something from uh, from USA Today. Uh, the White House is seeking a stimulus package worth anywhere from $850 billion to $1 trillion. I think the last report is $1.2 trillion stimulus package to give money back to businesses and workers and government agencies. And President Trump said it's going to be big, it's going to be bold. Uh, Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin says that unemployment could reach 20% if Congress doesn't enact the stimulus package. I do believe at the, at, the, at the recording of this video, the House has already passed it. We're still waiting for the Senate to pass it. Uh, the official, uh, the administration official said the package could include 500 billion to direct payments or tax cuts. So 500 billion directly to Americans, 200 billion to 300 billion in small business assistance, and 50 billion to 100 billion in airline and industry relief. So a ton of money here, 250 billion of this package would go towards making direct payments to Americans directly into your pocket. I think the, the side joke is, listen, President Trump is saying, I'm putting money in your pocket. So I think the side joke is, anybody there that has ever said, President Trump is not my president, you're not getting a check. Just kidding. Okay, so let's move on to the uh, CDC. The CDC, in terms of cases in the United States, over 7,038 cases as of March 17th, updated March 18th here in the CDC report, 7,038 cases of COVID, coronavirus, COVID-19 is in America. Total deaths at 97, 
the coronavirus has reported cases in all states. And uh, wow, so the, uh, so here's the thing too, 46 people uh, were on board the Diamond Princess cruise ship was tested positive for COVID-19. And, and, he, and he, here's something, everybody thinks about you know death, everybody thinks about the worst, everything, uh, everybody thinks about fear. One thing I want you to seek out is information to help serve you uh, find a solution. And so I found one here, uh, Pfizer and Regeneron have an update on the coronavirus drug development. So on Tuesday, two big drug biotech companies, Pfizer PFE and Regeneron REGN, these are the ticker symbols, made announcements related to the coronavirus drug development efforts. Pfizer has uh, revealed a letter of intent to develop, co-develop Germany-based biotech's uh, uh, vaccine candidate BNT162 to prevent COVID-19. Uh, BN, BNT162 is presently in preclinical testing and ex expected to enter clinical studies in April. So all this talk about vaccines being done a year, a year and a half from now, I'm looking at data here, I'm looking at news reports here that they're already in clinical trials and clinical testing. Regeneron on Tuesday said it's identified hundreds of virus neutralizing fully human antibodies from which it will select the two top antibodies to develop, to develop a cocktail treatment to treat or prevent COVID-19. It aims to seek large-scale manufacturing of the antibody cocktail therapy by mid-April. Regeneron has an agreement with the U.S. Department of Human Health Services for manufacturing antibodies targeting SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. So guys, I'm not telling you that a vaccine is coming anytime soon. I'm just saying that there's already clinical trials happening. Another one here from Navy, U.S. Navy SEAL, a guy I follow very closely on social media, uh, Remy Adeliki. He says, here's, here's some good news about what's going on with COVID-19. China's closed down its last coronavirus hospital. Why? Not enough new cases to support them. I'm not so truthful with that because I can never trust a, co a company or a country that uh, controls all, all of its reporting. I'm not so sure about that one. Uh, researchers of the Erasmus Medical Center claim to have found an antibody against coronavirus. Okay. A 103-year-old Chinese grandmother has made a photo cover of COVID-19 after being treated for six days in Wuhan, China. Again, not so sure about that, but there's there's some thoughts to be looking for. Uh, a, cl a, cl a Cleveland clinic developed a COVID-19 test that gives results in hours, not days. Okay. Good news from South Korea, where the number of new cases is declining for COVID-19. Scientists in Israel likely to announce the development of a coronavirus vaccine. A San Diego biotech company developing a COVID-19 vaccine in collaboration with Duke University, the National University of Singapore, and Tulsa County's first positive COVID-19 recovery case has been covered and recovered. So listen, as much as there's fear out there about death, about people contracting the virus, one of the things I've been telling my kids, listen kids, here's how somebody looks like, here's the treatments, here's the symptoms of somebody going through coronavirus. And here's how they recovered. They aren't a target that we're gonna have a high risk, meaning that these are people that were supposed to potentially die from getting coronavirus. But look at them, they're alive, they're well, they're recovered, they're being discharged from the hospital. Now I'm not saying that's for every case, but as much as their fear of death, there's also the opposite of people fighting through it, battling through it, surviving through it, and living through it. So here, here's the thing, if you want to stay ahead of the coronavirus recession, there's really two tendencies that people play into. It's either fear or faith, your choice. So here's the thing about fear. If you buy into fear, fear likes to cower. Fear likes to fret. Fear likes to despair. Fear likes to panic. Fear likes to freeze. Fear likes to destruct and destroy and panic and anxiety. It's not a building type of attitude or perspective on things. Now, the opposite is true. Faith, if you buy into a faith, what does faith do? Faith allows you to stand up and stand strong. Faith allows you to pray. Faith allows you to hope. Faith gives you confidence. Faith gives you ability to fight. Faith gives you ability to be constructive. So faith allows you to be constructive. So with that being said, here's some questions I would like to encourage you to ask yourself in terms of your savings, your retirement, and how to make sure you play financial defense as it relates to your savings, retirement, and things that you help hold to plan for down the road to live on to, to pay for your lifestyle to sustain you through your bouts for financial freedom. Number one, if you want to play defense, ask yourself this question. If self-quarantine and the national lockdown go in place, where do you think the market will go? Up or down? Where do you think the market will go? If self-quarantine and, and this whole lockdown happens, uh, martial law happens, remember, in planning, part of faith says, plan for the worst, but also expect the best. See, that's operating with confidence and being constructive about things. But if the stock market was going to go up or down based on a national quarantine, what do you think is going to happen? The second question, 
If people cannot go to work, people can't make a living. Not they can't work, but they they have an inability, incapacity to get to work. What will happen to small businesses? What will happen to the common person? What will happen to a person's ability to, to be able to earn money to put food on the table and feed their family and, and rent payment and all the different things? And by the way, I think there's a billionaire out there that says, hey, hey, President Trump, why don't we put a 30-day hiatus on paying rent, bills, etc., etc." Please, you can make that happen. This billionaire is saying that. Who knows how much push and shove this can actually work. All right? Listen, if that happens, great. If it doesn't, I'm prepared for the worst, but also I'm expecting the best. That's called playing financial defense. Third question to ask yourself is every day that you wait, what will happen if you do nothing? What will happen if you wait? What will happen if you procrastinate? What will happen if you continue to say to yourself, well, it's gonna recover, it's gonna recover, we'll get through this, but listen, you see a mar money market, money, bo 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 what's happening? What do you think the smart people are doing? What do you think the money smart people, what do you think the money wise people are doing in this mo moment? Are they saying, you know what? Let me cut the losses or well, am I saying, let, let me write it out. I don't know, whatever you think is going to happen, you have to process that because you have one of two things. If you wait, this might happen. If you, if you don't wait and you make moves, you already know what the bottom line is for you. But if you wait and you hope for it to finally recover, how, how do you know that there's the bottom? And there's another bottom and you find another bottom where you wait for it to come back up. Remember, if you have a 10% loss, you need a 12% gain just to get you back where you started. If you had a 20% loss, you need a 32, 34% gain just to get you back where you started. If you had a 50% loss, you need a 100% return just to get you back to square one. The question for you is, will your money recover like that over an extended period of time or will it happen right away? The question for you is, you gotta answer that. You gotta figure out what the worst case scenario for you is and are you okay with that answer? If not, then you gotta make moves. All right, so let's play financial offense and more specifically offense when it relates to your income as well as your cash flow, money coming in. Now what's the saying? Defense wins championships, right? Correct. But offense scores touchdowns. And you need financial touchdowns in your checkbook and your bank account right away. So number one, ask yourself, you, if you are uh, self-quarantined, if you are having to stay at home, if you cannot go to work, you cannot make a living, a couple of questions you have to ask yourself, you know, the Marine Corps, we said improvise, adapt, and overcome. So for yourself, can you work at home? Can you work at home? Can you, can you make money? Can you telecommute? Can you video commute? Can you make money online? Are you able to adapt that way using technology, using phone, using Zoom, using GoToMeeting? By the way, I think that's a very good stock to buy right now, online video conference companies. Anyway, maybe perhaps you need to make, make sure you can, set, so you can solidify that you can make money doing what you're doing right now from home, or you can make money online. I'll give you an example. My trainer, he trains me at the gym, right? Boom, 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 left, right. But however, we can't go to the gym right now. There's nobody being allowed in the gym. So he's adapted. They spent 24, 40 hours creating an app. So therefore they can still train their clients to work from home. Actually uh, an hour ago, he did a Facebook live. He did an app live from his app. So therefore he can hold his clients accountable to their fitness goals by allowing them to work out at home or where, they're at, where they're, they may be. And he's seeing them through this app. So that's a, a way to improvise, adapt and overcome. Number two, Maybe this is an opportunity for you to seek a side business or a side venture or a side business. Oftentimes, listen, they say, they say necessity is the mother of innovation. Right now you need money. Right now you need to pay the bills. Right now you need to get ahead and stay ahead of this whole coronavirus recession that's taking place. And so with that side hustle or side business, maybe this is an opportunity right now for, for you to truly really consider it. You've been maybe procrastinating on it, maybe telling yourself, man, I'm good. Maybe in, in the past, you know, I'm straight. But listen, right now, you're not straight. You're not good. If you are, you're denying yourself a, few, a future opportunity to forever be ahead of the coronavirus recession or any other thing that may come our way. So when you're looking at a different side business or side venture to start, like I did when I was in the Marine Corps, it was my seventh year in the Marines. I have an eight year contract. Uh, uh, I, I started my side business when, when I was in my last year. And when I transitioned out of the military, although it wasn't smooth, it wasn't easy from a mental and a financial standpoint, at least I had confidence knowing what my next steps were. Maybe this time you ought to consider what your next steps are from either career or business as, as, it goes through, uh, as it goes through these trying times. Number three, well, who can help? Who's a coach? Who's a mentor? Who can open a door for you? These are moments right now, you need people in your pocket. Right now it's for you and an opportunity, if you're sitting at home, instead of Netflix and chill, quarantine and chill, Reach out to people on Facebook, reach out to people on Instagram, connect with people that are like-minded, that are, that are leading the way, that are going ahead 
and say, you know, we have confidence throughout this recession because we've been making money alternatively for years. Number four, if you're looking for a side venture, a different career, a different opportunity, you need to ask yourself this question. Is this product, is this career, is this business good in both good economies as well as bad economies? Otherwise, you're just setting yourself up for a future failure down the road or a future panic or time of anxiety. Listen, just like most relationships where you find out the best of them during the worst of times, the same thing I say about a career or business. I find out the best of that career or business in, in terms of longevity of my income during the worst of times in the economy. I want to make sure that in the worst times in the economy, I have a long lasting business and I can survive and thrive through these trying times. I've been in the insurance industry now for 21 years as an example that during bad times, I've actually exploded and gone well in business versus good times where it's just kind of easy, easy, steady, eddy. But during bad times, for some reason, the insurance industry picks up as a thought as you're considering your next move. Number five, which industry is no one paying attention to? That nobody's paying attention to. That you should be paying attention to. Oftentimes people say, get involved in this, get involved in that, get involved in this. And the masses are saying that. But guess what? What happens when the masses are saying that? The opportunity is gone. The opportunity has, has been there and gone a year, two, three years ago. You just got in late to know about it. Look at an industry. This is a counter thought. Look at an industry nobody's thinking about, nobody's talking about, that isn't sexy, that isn't exciting to be a part of, but you, you get involved in it. You make it sexy. You make it exciting to be a part of. You innovate, you disrupt it, you make a change. Those moments are happening at this very moment and nobody is paying to certain particular industries. So go check that out. Number six. Is the demand for this product enduring? When I'm looking for this product, is it gonna be, again, in good times and bad times? Is the product only temporary? Because oftentimes I see a lot of guys that have a business, they pop up a business, pop up a business, oh man, this could do so well, this is gonna do so well. But the demand for it is only for a year or two or three years until something else changes, until something else innovates, or some competitors get involved, or a government makes a change. That's where the, the demand for it is then constricted versus expansive. So ask yourself, is this career or is this business, is the demand for this going to be during, the, well, again, we're, again, both during good and bad times? And then last but not least, is the suppliers, vendors, providers that provide you raw materials, to provide you product to put on your shelves, to stock, are they also enduring? Otherwise, you might have to put, put yourself up in business, next year you don't have any product to sell because the raw materials that are supporting that product or service is gone based on certain innovation, certain government takeover, or in this case, a coronavirus pandemic where they shut down because if they shut down, you've got nothing to sell or, con or build from because they cannot supply you with the things that you need to operate your business. One question you need to ask yourself to get ahead of this coronavirus recession. So before I wrap up, there's one video I want you to watch is right here. It's how I turn a $500 investment to become the next millionaire. This is what I did back in 1998, 1999, and I've seen people do this over a 21-year career of me being an entrepreneur. I've seen many, many people do the same. Many colleagues getting wealthy, many people staying ahead of recession, good times, bad times, and staying ahead financially. Because here's one thing, they can suspend the NBA season. They can suspend certain businesses from being able to operate. But here's temporarily what they can't suspend right now. They can't suspend you owing money to your bill collectors. They can't suspend the mail being delivered, so therefore you owe somebody. So once they do that, I'm not gonna be a big believer, but even if they do, I wanna make sure that you are in such a place of financial confidence that even if they don't do that, your financial income is up here, your financial status is up here, your financial security is up here, and yet your lifestyle and your bills are down here. See, that's how you make your membership into the Seven Figure Squad. I'd love to know your thoughts, love to know your feedback, drop them in the comment section below. And remember, I will reply to these comments. And remember, we're giving away, once we have 15,000 subs, a set of custom pair of Jordans from my office to your business, to your address, once you reach 15,000 subs. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you engage, make sure you comment. Can't wait for you to receive, to be a lucky winner of those customized Jordans in your brand, your color, your style, whatever you want on it, from me to you. So with that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Seven Figure Squad. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.